Amen. Thanks, Nate. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to church. Hey, what's up, people online? Thank you so much for joining us. We're glad you're here, too. We wouldn't want to do this without you. Hey, would you just, like, point to three people and say, show up? Go ahead. In your room, wherever you are, point somebody in another car over. Say, show up. Yeah, we're going to talk about showing up today. I want to talk to you about the best chance for you to have an influence that lasts is just by showing up. So we're starting a brand new series called Parental Guidance Suggested. And sometimes when we start a series like this, people are like, oh no, parenting series, I ain't showing up for four weeks because I ain't got kids or I'm not in a stage where kids are what's going on. And I just want to encourage you first, that's a bad idea. You should be here every weekend anyway, because even though, yes, we'll be talking about parenting things, really God is the ultimate parent and he parents us in certain ways. And so we all want to tune in to how that's supposed to work. But also, I wanted to start today with a message that really is just for everybody because everybody wants to be an influence. Everybody has people around them that, if you really think about it, you'd, you'd sure like to be an influence in their direction. So we're going to start this series. And what I want to do is, I want you to pull out your phone. Would you do me a favor? Pull out your phone. And go to like a notes app. Whatever, you know, if Apple Notes or some, you know, equivalent, go ahead and find your notes app. And on that page, I want you to do me a favor, write down one or two, maybe three or four people that they were just there for you at the right time. They were there when you had to have a certain conversation. They got you a job. They were the person that showed you how to do that thing that became really important later. And maybe they didn't even know it at the time. Maybe you didn't even know it at the time. But having them in your life, it just pivoted things a little bit. It just sent it down a new direction. And you could say, as you look back at those people, go ahead and write them down. They showed up. They showed up for me. They were there. Now, you're going to like, hang on to this, okay? Because you might even want to make it your wallpaper at some point because uh, I think you're really going to see that it's meaningful. We, we ought to just take a moment and, and thank God for them because they knew something that I hope all of us know collectively more by the end of the worship experience, and that is that if we're really going to have an impact, if we really want to make a lasting impact, our best chance at that is just by showing up. We can't have much influence in someone's life if we're not going to do it. They knew, and some of us know we need to know more, you've got you've to find a way to be physically present with somebody if you really want to make a difference in their life. you you got to be there somehow. I know that we want to do everything online. We can do a lot of stuff online, but at some point, you've got to find a way to get around this person. If you want to be that person that helps influence in a certain way, you got to show up and you got to be physically present. Now, I know some of us, we're used to showing up. So you show up a lot and you're in different people's lives and you're getting kind of weary because you're like, man, I'm always here and, and I don't know when this is going to pay off. And can I just remind you, um, maybe the people that showed up for you didn't know it was going to pay off then when they showed up for you. And maybe you're really investing in fifth graders right now and none of them have come up to you and said, hey, thanks, by the way, for saving my marriage in 20 years. You know, because they don't know that yet, but, but you don't know that that didn't happen. So I think this message is for you too. I think it's going to encourage you. Here's, what, here's the secret that, that, that I wish more people knew. When we show up, we change more than the person we're trying to influence changes often. Something happens on the inside of us. Maybe it's our heart expands a little bit more. Maybe there's something that, that comes back to life in us that we forgot was there as we seek to show up and be a positive influence in people's lives. And one of the reasons that is is because you start to love that which you show up for. Like you just start showing up, but then you start to love them. I remember years ago, I was just, it was about... 2006 or something. I was just getting back into ministry after a season of being away from it. And my ministry opportunity was to go visit these college-age kids. And we were like in a closet that was, honestly, man, it wasn't much bigger than the front part of this stage. I mean, that's where we were, okay? And there was like 12. And I remember like, I don't want to go to this. I was sick at that point in my life. Like I had some, some chronic illness stuff and it wasn't easy to go. And I was like, I felt like the Lord was saying, show up. I just want you to show up knocking on the door of your heart and saying, show up. And so I went. And as I was with these 12 college-age students or whatever, sometimes there was like four. Some of y'all remember that. Some of y'all were there. Um, I just began to sense something was happening in my soul. Suddenly I was in a Jesus-y way falling in love with these people. 
and I loved being around them. There's something changing about me. A few of them still go to our church. But something changed in me because I did it. Now, we get the wrong idea about influence sometimes. Sometimes we think influence is primarily from power. We think, hey, man, if I just get some power, then I can just make people do what I want them to do, and then I'll influence them that way. And that's true. You can do that, especially as a parent, when they're like a toddler. Like you can literally just pick them up and, all right, I'm putting you over here for a while, put them in the crib or whatever. And, and how many parents know that don't last? Anybody know that? Yeah. Yeah, that runs out real quick, actually. You, can, you, you can't just pick them up and put them in the crib. They just get right out. So that doesn't last long. Others of us, maybe we think, well, you know what I'll do is I'll just gain a lot of success. And if I gain a lot of success, then people will, they'll do what I want them to do. And I'm not saying that's not a little bit true, especially like if it's in, it's in the work realm where people kind of have to do what you want them to do because maybe you're their boss or you're their leader and they're paid to do, and they don't get paid if they don't do what you want them to do. But here's what I found. Even when you have a bit of success, sometimes the most important people that you'd most like to influence, they don't even care about your success. They don't even care. Okay, so my kids, like they know I'm a pastor, all right? And they don't care, you know? Like I, I, sometimes I'm, you know, because your kids get a little older and you, you want to have, you know, conversation and, and you can just see them a little bit grown on the inside. And they're like, oh, okay, here we go. You know, they all, they're always honoring. They're like, here goes dad. You know what I'm saying? All right. And, you know, because they're, they're just, they're over it, you know? And so I'm, I'm like wanting to influence them. They're like, okay. And, and so sometimes the people you want to influence most are the ones that don't care what you do or what kind of success you have, because that's not what's meaningful to them. But there's a different kind of influence. It's the influence we're going to see actually in Jesus today. There's a different kind of influence that comes not from being in charge, not from having power, not from being right. There's an influence that comes long-term because you cared enough to show up. Because you cared enough to show up again and again and again. So you've got long-term influence influence. It's a consistency thing. And what, what we teach people when we do that is we teach them to trust that we're going to be there. And we teach them that the thing that's meaningful to them is also meaningful to us because it's meaningful to them. And that's a different kind of influence. And actually that's a stickier kind of influence. Think about Jesus. Jesus comes to earth and he walks around on our planet and he demonstrates that he's invested here. He's a high priest that understands are all of our weaknesses, and yet is without sin. Why did he come? He comes not just to pay a penalty, though he did. So listen, the most important thing about Jesus really is the atonement, is the fact that he paid the penalty with his blood for your sin. But there's another piece of Jesus, and what that is is Jesus dropped his thing to do your thing. He was already in heaven, and he dropped his thing to do your thing, and I'm going to prove it to you. So the Apostle Paul, once upon a time, he was a real, he was a zealous religious person, but he you know, it didn't really do very much other than cause violence and cause him to persecute God's people. And, and one day he, he kind of gets it and he falls in love with Jesus Christ and he realized Jesus is really my forgiver and he's supposed to be the king. And so as he follows Jesus, his whole life is transformed. And later on, he's writing to the Philippians. And this is what he says, chapter, three, chapter 2, verse 3, do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit with humility. Consider one another as more important than yourselves. We can read that, but we don't get that. Consider one another as more important than yourselves. <clears throat> now, in the Greek, in a second, this is going to rhyme. You can't see it in the English, but it's going to kind of rhyme. Verse 4, do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus. Here comes the rhyme. Who, as he already existed in the form of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped. Jesus is part of the Godhead. And he doesn't, consider, he doesn't consider what he wants. He's emptying himself of that. He considers what the Father wants. And, and, and he, Paul tells us, don't consider what you want, just like Christ. Don't consider what you want. Consider what they want. <clears throat> Verse 7, here it is. Powerful, awesome. But he emptied himself by taking the form of a bondservant and being born in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. That word emptied himself, it's a really important word. It's the word keno, and what it means is voided. It's, it's to step down, it's to unrobe yourself. Okay, so if you think of a voided check, it, it has a lot of potential power, but you write void on it, and you 
You take away the power that it had. That's what Jesus did over himself when he came to us. He emptied himself. He voided himself. He stepped down away from his power. And why did he do it? He already had a great deal. It was already going awesome for Jesus. And he said, I'm going to drop my deal so I can do your deal. I'm going to empty myself. I'm going to void of all the stuff that I have so I can come get involved and be interested and connect with and understand the things that you have. He emptied himself. I wrote this down. Emptying is the ability to press pause on your own agenda, thoughts, and feelings long enough to explore someone else's agenda, thoughts, and feelings. It means you let go of you to connect with them. Let's do that again. You let go of you. You let go. You empty. He emptied himself. You let go of you to connect with them. He was found in appearance as a man. He connected with them as a man. He didn't come as a tree frog. right? He didn't come as a picnic bench. He came as a human because he was trying to communicate, I want to get you. I want to understand your suffering. I want to walk among you as one of you so that you understand I'm invested in your thing. I want to be here. Why would he do that? I mean, Jesus, if anybody could have done it, Jesus could have been like, um, I'm just going to have... I'm just going to have my influence by power, right? He has all power, so what's anybody going to do? He's already got all power. He could have said, um, I'm just going to, I'm always right. I'm righteous, I'm right, I'm omniscient, I know everything, so I'm just going to lean into the fact that I'm right and you're wrong, and that's how I'm going to try to influence you. He didn't do that, and he didn't do that because he wanted his relationship with you and his relationship with me. He wanted it based upon the idea that there's a God who's interested in you and wants to come find you out. He wants to come say, I'm all in on you. I'm going to empty myself of me so I can connect with you. That's what Jesus was after. So we let go of you to connect with them. And the good news here is everybody can do this. Everybody, every one of us can empty ourselves to connect with with others. Now, the danger is, the difficulty is, it's scary. It's a little bit scary because it's going to cost us if we do this. It did cost Jesus. It's going to cost us. Not as much, but it's going to cost us. It's going to cost you time. Think about, I mean, just even just thinking about other people's stuff, that's going to cost time. It, what's it like to be them? What's it like to go through life as that kid? They don't even have a father figure around. The, the house is chaos. What is it like to do life as that kid in that family? What's it like to go home to that? What's it like for this person? Man, that's a very different life than mine. I'm just going to take my time. And I'm going I'm to think about it. I'm going to put myself in their shoes. That's going to cost time. It's going to cost heart space. Some of us, we, maybe you don't want to expand your heart. <laughs> maybe you've been... You know, like that burned you in the past. You're like, eh, yeah, yeah, never again. I don't want that to cost my heart space, but, but God's into the stretch. Somebody say, God's into the stretch. God, I know that you don't want to, but God's into the stretch. God will stretch your heart. So maybe that's it for some of us. For others of us, we're afraid that if we start to love again, we're, we're going to get hurt. So we're just afraid, ah. If that opens up, that leaves me vulnerable. And then there's others of us who are just a little more selfish. The truth is, you just like your spick and span life. You just like it tidy. You're like, this works. This is clean. You know, there's, there's the least amount of resistance and convenience, inconvenience. So I, I like this, and I don't want to get anything. I don't want anything to muck it up. I don't want to make it harder in any way. Proverbs 14.4 says this, an empty stable stays clean. There's no income from an empty stable. Oh, baby, yeah, nothing's going on. That, that looks really clean. But there's no kingdom income coming from that. Jesus can't use that very much because there's no work happening. So my wife, she was a college student. She was my girlfriend at the time. And we went to this little church, and one of the gals, she was actually one of the professor's wives of the college we went to, this gal asked her, hey, why don't you come out to McDonald's with me? And as a young college student, Kenzie starts to get discipled and mentored by this older gal. They're meeting at McDonald's first, and then her name's Beth, and Beth invites Kenzie over, okay? And now she's like 
in Beth's life, and she's seeing what happens when Beth homeschools her kids, and she's watching that, okay? And you got to remember, like, th- this is 1996 about, okay, so homeschool is not what it is right now. Homeschool, when you th- people thought of homeschool, it's kind of ridicule. It's like, oh, so you make your own butter too, you know? Or you don't, do you all have light bulbs? Like, it's a step away from Amish. That's how people think about it, okay? And so, yeah, we, we're pretty excited about that choice now that we made 25 years ago. But back then, it wasn't, it wasn't as cool. Um, but she's watching Beth do all this stuff. And then Beth will bring home all these groceries. And, and she's talking to Kenzie. And she's putting them away. And she's, she's teaching her about, hey, this is, how I, this is what I do with a whole chicken. And this is how I feed my family. And this is how this goes. And then she began to share her books with her, the, the ways she'd been discipled. And she, she shared these old, old school books. And baby, we need the old school books because there's nothing Instagram about these women's books. This is about, these people didn't want to be famous. They were just, I, I want to disciple people. So I'm going to write some things down. And as Kenzie made her way, these are literally Beth's books. Kenzie made her way through, can you imagine the, the gift that it was to find Beth's prayers and the notes that Beth made in these books? And she's passing this wisdom on from one generation to the next. And she would talk with Beth about marriage and about kids and about submission. I said the S word. Yeah, I, I got to tell you, man, I know some people are out on submission. I think that's probably because you've never seen a beautiful model, never seen a beautiful example. But Kenzie saw one, and it was really beautiful. Here's what happened. Beth showed up by inviting Kenzie along. She just invited her along. She was already doing the things. She, well, just, hey, come with me. I've got to put away these groceries. Now, she probably could have put away those groceries faster and easier if Kenzie wasn't there. And she was like, well, I'm doing this anyway. I'm going to show up for this girl just by bringing her with me, by having some McDonald's. Imagine a church that's filled with, it's filled with empty shower-uppers. It's filled with people that just, I'm going to empty me to connect with you. I'm going to turn down my thing in order to do your thing. This is what servant leaders get. This is what this church gets. If you look at every iteration of this church, if you go back to 1974 when Faith Church planted, their deal was we don't want to just explain the gospel. We want to demonstrate the gospel. If you go to 2009 at Torch Church, they didn't want to just explain the gospel. They wanted to demonstrate the gospel. You go to 2016, Torch of Faith, they didn't want to just explain the gospel. They wanted to demonstrate the gospel. You go to 2022 at Fierce Church, they don't want to just Now, explain the gospel. We want to demonstrate the gospel. I don't want to just say I love you. I want to show up. I want to do it. I want us to prove it by what we do. Here's here's the story of the people who are showing up in this church. Here's what they know, every one of them. They know, okay, this isn't really about me. The spotlight isn't on me. I'm going to show up. I'm going to take my place on, on the stage, so to speak, so that the hero can come out, so that the hero can take his place. Because the hero is Jesus Christ. I'm going to show up so God can do. It's not about what I did. It's about what God does when I show up. As I start to show up, God starts to move. And there's things God wouldn't have done and couldn't have done had I not showed up in that place. So many of you are familiar with this, this painting. This is Christ at Heart's Door. You've seen this before. It's one of my favorite paintings as a kid. There's something magical about that. It attracted me to Jesus. And you, you probably notice, like, it, you can't see too well right there, but if you ever take a look at it, there's no doorknob. There's no handle on the door. You ever notice that? And there's darkness inside, but there's light in Jesus. That's the heart of a man or woman. And there's no doorknob because Jesus never forces his way in. You got to open the door. And so each and every one of us, at some point, We're in life, we're going to hear Jesus knocking. I stand at the door and knock. Anyone who opens the door, I'll come into him and dine with him. He stands at the door and he knocks. And when he comes in, he transforms our heart. He comes in to live in our heart. And he forgives our sin. And he starts to, you know, he walks around the house of our heart and he starts, well, we're going to throw this out. Like he just starts getting rid of stuff, you know. And there's always more that he's got to clean. But he, he like starts to take over different places. But suddenly it's good. And suddenly it's beautiful in there. Here's what we don't know. After Jesus has been in there for a while, he's going to knock again. He's going to knock. And we're going to go to the door, 
And Jesus is going to say, you see them? See that group of people over there? You see that teenager right there? You see this group of people right here? Will you invite them in? Because I died for them, and I love them. And I came in here not just to put me in here. I want to put some other people in your heart. I want you to open your heart to what I love, not just the fact that I love you. I want you to invite them in. And one of the ways we invite them in is we show up. We show up by opening the door. About the same time Beth was discipling my wife, another gentleman who was in our church, real soft-spoken fella, he wrote me a letter. Now, this was, again, this was the mid-90s, and so there was email somewhere, but most of us weren't using it yet. He wrote a real letter, and I say that because I want everyone to see there's different ways to do this. There's not just a cookie-cutter way to initiate with somebody. He writes me this letter. You know, I'm getting this letter from this older dude. And he, he says, hey, I just want you to know, I've seen you in our church. I'm praying for you. If you ever want to get coffee, I just wanted to make myself available. And so I took him up on it. And we start to go out for coffee once a month. And he starts to sharpen me. He starts to, you know, hear some of what I'm saying. And then he's, he's good at giving feedback. Sometimes I didn't even know how to receive feedback yet, but he knew how to give it, so he just would. I mean, I wasn't much different. Imagine, he's a soft-spoken guy, okay? And y'all know me. I'm like this spitting fire kind of dude, real intense, Okay, and, and I wasn't much different then. I was just less saved. And so, you know, that's how that went. And, and he's, but he's, he's got the patience. It wasn't like him, but he's got the patience to sit in there. And, you know, he went to my first preaching event. He just showed up. He was just there as this, this kind of quiet guardian watching over me. He opened the door. And when we open the door, Jesus is going to ask you to become a door opener. You open that door. He's going to show you some other people. And here's the thing. He's not making any promises about what's coming through that door. Okay? It might not be like you. It might not be the ones that you would think. It might not even be someone who believes like you. It might be somebody very different. You might say, I don't even know what to do with kids. And yet, Jesus is saying, see those kids? I want you to go spend time with them. Like, I, I, I don't know what to do. I know that you don't know what to do. But I'm the hero. I know what to do. And here's what's beautiful about Jesus. Whatever Jesus directs you to let in, he makes his own responsibility. He's not counting on you to do it perfect. He's counting on his wisdom and power through you. And here's what I think every one of us needs to be warned about. And this is the right place because you showed up here. You showed up here today. You showed up here right now online, where, whenever this is. You're, you're listening right now. You got to understand that as we come here on Sunday morning, it's really important. It's, it's like it corrects our thinking. The point of Sunday is for you to come in and, and really you just hear that we get kind of a cleanse of God's word. And it's just, you know, because God's word leaks out of us all week. And even if you're in the, work every, the word every day, like it just leaks and you got to you just have, it's, it's a regular time for you to just get, boop, you know, pop your right back. Okay, like the typewriter, like there you are again. You get a fresh bath in the word. And it's to see other people and appreciate your family and worship together. But you got to know that after about two or three years, the novelty's going to wear off. And we'll still do new series, and you'll still hear new things from God's Word, but the novelty will be gone, and so it just won't seem as exciting. And you'll be like, ah, I know, I know, Carter. You'll be like my kids. You'll be like, ah, uh-huh, I know, Dad. I get it. And I think that's supposed to happen because... It's time to show up and not just show up here and not just show up there. See, if we don't decide to show up in somebody's life, we don't grow up. If you don't decide to show up, you don't grow up. There's something that becomes stunted because, listen, Jesus didn't just come to give us a class. He says, yeah, at some point you got to get on the bike, though. Quit reading about it. you got to get on. And there's people out there that I'm knocking on the door of your heart with, and I need you to open the door. We help 0% of the people we don't show up for. Oh, that's a weird statement, but just think it through. We help 0% of the people we don't show up for. And God wants us to show up. Somebody say, show up. So here's what I want to ask you to do. Let's pull out your phone again. Pull out your phone. Pull up that notes app. 
you wrote down people who were some kind of an impact on you. They showed up. Now let's do this. Let's write on there people that maybe the Spirit of God is asking you to show up for. Maybe there might be some people who you want your name on their list later on in life. Who is, who is the Spirit of Jesus just saying, have you noticed? Have you noticed them? Have you seen that thing over there? I would like to send you. And it's going to enlarge your heart. And it's not always going to be easy because it's not always going to be what you expected. But I'm going to take center stage and I'm going to be the hero of the story. And I'm going to help you open other people's hearts to me. And it's going to be absolutely beautiful. So one of the things our church wants to do is make lots of opportunities available for you to do that right here. Certainly there's places outside of our church and there's, there's you know, siblings or, or relatives that you have or neighbors or somebody you're just kind of noticing. Maybe it's like, Tim, you want to write some people some letters and that's a way that you're going to show up for them. I don't know what that is, but we've got a lot of ways you can do that here. So I just want to tell you what some of them are. We, we are in desperate need of fierce kids, teachers. Like, they need adults who are going to show up. We need camera operators. We need graphics creators. We need people that are going to go with our teenagers on the wave and be their squad leaders and be a major force in their life. We need people who are going to do buildings and grounds inside and out. We need folks who are going to edit audio. We need folks that are going to just, you're just willing to, this is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to step out. I'm just going to greet people. I'm going to be in the, whatever it is, how is God asking you to show up now? Because sometimes we're faithful to show up here. He might call us to be faithful to show up elsewhere later on when we're found faithful. I asked my 18-year-old daughter, she's almost 18. I just asked her, yeah, you know, as you're growing up, what were some of the influences? What were some of the ones, who were some of the people that really showed up for you? And she said, you know, it was Miss Nancy, it was Miss Heather. You know, I, I learned a lot just by watching Brandon and Erica. And I'm, I'm kind of trying to piece this together. Like, what's the theme here? What, what's, the, what's the common denominator? And I really believe one of the things that my kids would say is the people that showed up for them were already in the places they were going to be. They had already decided to go to the youth retreat. They are just going to show up there. They already decided they were going to be at that event and just be around and not even know if there's going to be any specific conversations or just years of conversations that's going to shape somebody and spin, spin them some way. They're just going to show up and be in some kids' lives or some adults' lives, or some people that are they're losing their way a little bit, and you're just going to be around. You're just going to be where they are so that when they're there, you're showed up for them automatically. So maybe you need to show up by taking along. Maybe you need to show up by writing a letter or just inviting someone into a relationship. Or maybe you need to show up by already placing yourself on purpose in the places the types of people you want to show up for are going to be. And that's church. That's a that's hundred different ways here at the church. And we can't grow up until we decide to. So here's what we're gonna do the rest of the time. We're gonna cut the sermon early and we've just got some folks out in the lobby and they're, they're there to help you find a place that you wanna show up, that you think maybe God is calling you to show up. So it's like all of our different ministries represented. And I just got to tell you, if they're not out there unless they need folks, all right, we're still pretty in pandemic mode. So there's needs everywhere. So I want to encourage you, go ahead and check that out and believe, yeah, God might genuinely be calling me. And for some, you already have like an inkling or you'll get an inkling. And some, it might be over the next few days. You just ask the Holy Spirit, where, where do you want me to show up? For some of you watching online, there might be some online ministry. There might be something else that's just more in your private world where God is saying, I want you to show up. But we're going to pray in just a minute, and then I'm going to release you. And I just ask you to just, just walk slowly down the hall and see what happens. See if God is, see, see if Jesus is knocking on anything. And we're going to pray that even if you don't hear him knocking, see, he's so wise and awesome and perfect. He has a way of just using what our natural decision would be to get us into his will. 
So let's bow our heads. Jesus, you showed up for us. Thank you so much that you emptied yourself to connect with us. We pray for us now that you would help us to follow your lead and empty us to connect with others. There's a hundred different ways we're called to have influence. God, but help us be all in. Help us to forget about our thing for a while, to focus on your thing. I pray for courage, and I pray that you would just help us find our way. And whatever happens, as we open the door, that you would take center stage and draw more and more hearts unto you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's go get them, folks.